Alrighty, in this video, we're looking at the CX CAS student software and the basic functionality and how you should go about using the menus, the problems, the pages and the settings. First things first, to get this um, student software, you have to navigate to the TI Inspire website. I'll leave a link to it down below. Choose your correct file, whether it's Windows or Mac, and it's a pretty easy install. All you need is your license number, which comes with your calculator when you purchase it. Um, if you've lost that, perhaps uh, if you've still got your receipt, you could email TI Inspire there. Help is very efficient. It's worked for me in the past in recovering a license number. So consider that it's a very powerful software for your computer. Uh, first things first, when you're looking at your main menu, which is what you either get when you click menu or you open the calculator for the first time and start a, um, and, and turn it on, uh, I want you to avoid using the scratch pad, the calculate or the graph functionality. It's um, good for really quick one-off calculations. Uh, most of my students have a secondary just Casio calculator for that anyway. Uh, I'd highly recommend using the documents functionality much like you would with a computer. Um, before we get into the documents, we're gonna have a quick look at the settings. Instead of clicking and navigating to settings and clicking it like this, I highly recommend getting used to using the numbers which are associated with the menu items. It speeds up the process a lot more and it's much more efficient, which my students can tell you is really important when it comes to using it in a test condition because you wanna be fast with the menus and not waste time. So five for settings and I want document settings. So I'm gonna go two and here are the settings that I currently have. Float, um, the display digits, it forces it to a certain number of decimal places. I recommend just leaving it on float. It's gonna give you um, as many as it can give you and you can round yourself. Uh, I recommend calculation mode being automatic or exact. Now the reason for this is you can force the, calculation, uh, force the calculator when entering a um, command to give you approximations, that's decimal values, but we would like the default to be exact. So for example, if I'm entering in a, a question and it's going to be a third, like root three is an answer, it can give me that in auto or exact mode. And if I want the approximated value, I can get it. I'll show you that later. I'm gonna leave it as auto, cast mode on computer algebra software, I think it stands for. Essentially the calculator can do algebra for you, leave that on. In exams you can't use it of course, uh, that functionality is turned off. However, it's good for practice. So they're just some of the settings you can look at the, um, look at the, uh, the user guide, the user manual if you wanna learn more about it. So I'm gonna go okay now, and I want to make a new document. So I'm gonna click one for new, I have this previous document already open. I don't want to save changes to test number two. So I'm going to click no. And here we are. You've got lots of different choices. The recommendation is <clears throat> to begin with, add calculator. It's the most obvious one. You use your calculator very often. And this 1.1 stands for problem.page. So in each problem, you can think of it as um, each well, yeah, problem, like question in a test or problem in an exercise. Um, that's the first digit. The point one refers to which page you are within that problem. So we've only got one thing open, so it's point one. But if I was to open, say, a graph uh, for this problem, I would go control doc, because that gives me the plus page. The control gives you all of the blue options on your calculator. So I want to add a page, so control doc and I wanna add a graph. So you can either navigate to it or just click two, and it's gonna bring up the graphs menu. So I'm gonna enter a basic parabola, let's say uh, f1 of x equals x squared minus four or something like that. Here's my parabola now. Uh, I'll get into in future videos using graphs and determining intercepts and all of that. For now, I just have created this function and notice that it's labeled as f1 of x. Okay, if you want to uh, go back to the previous document so you can use this function, because it is defined as F1 of X, we can click either control left, which gets me this blue back page, uh, and you can go back and forward through the pages, or you can click control up, which gives you all of your pages that, you're, are, that are in your current document, and you can just uh, go back and forth with the arrows and click the one you want. 
okay? Uh, either option. Now I mentioned F1 of X was defined. So if I was to type F1 and then sub in a value, let's say three uh, and hit enter, it's gonna output the value of five, okay? I'm also going to substitute in something that might give me an exact value. Let's say the square root of three. So control X squared to get me this, uh, the square root uh, operator. Type in three and hit enter. Uh, the answer is negative one, oh, of course, because I'm actually squaring a value. So let's go one more. Let's say I forgot to put a plus one after the root three. I can actually navigate up, <coughs> click enter, and it's gonna get me that exact same thing. Then I can navigate left and inside the parentheses, write plus one. So when I enter this one, now I get two root three as my answer, which you can see is, this is the point of having it on automatic. It gives me either the exact one by default, but I can force the calculator to give me the approximation by going, uh, you can do it straight away. I don't have to do what I'm about to do, but for practice, I'm gonna select the function that I want to evaluate and go control enter, which is gonna give me these approximately equal to symbol. And it's gonna give me the rough decimal value for two root three. This is useful if you're trying to contextualize an answer at the end of a question, for example. So now uh, this is, I can navigate back to my graph um, and those two things are interrelated because they're in the same problem. Let's say that's question one in an exam. Question two is about an exponential function. I don't want to be creating too many graphs, too many functions on the same graph. It can get a bit confusing for me. So what I'm gonna do is create a new problem instead of just a new page, okay? So I'm gonna go uh, document and I'm going to click now file, insert, not file, I'm gonna go insert and a new problem, so one. And I'm gonna add a calculator by default again, and I'm going to control, add page, and I'm gonna add a graph. So exactly what I did just before. But you'll notice that these two new pages are two point something, and that's because they're in problem number two. I could insert problem number three by going through the same process, document, insert, problem, and then pick a calculator. I can pick whatever I want and that's problem three now. And that way, if I go back to problem 2.2, I can define this um, graph, let's say it's an exponential, f of x equals, let's just do e, to, oh, oops, not ln, I want e, so e to the power of, let's say 2x, and we'll graph that. <clears throat> so here's my e to the 2x function, now when I go back to my calculator in problem two, I can type F1 of, I had root three plus one before, let's do it again. Square root of three, go to the right to get out of the square root. Cause if I go, if I, let me just uh, demonstrate that. If I type in square root of three plus one, it's gonna put the plus one inside the square root, which I don't want. So press right, then go plus one, and enter. And it's giving me this ugly thing. Let's get an approximation. I mentioned you don't have to type it again. Control, <coughs> begging my pardon, control, enter, 236.06. This is different from problem one, when I substituted in root three plus one, which gave me 3.46, because they're in different problems, the F1 of X function is defined for different problems. It's a very handy tool getting used to making new problems and pages within the problems. Uh, faster navigation would of course be control up, where it actually shows you the, prob the pages within each problem, which is really handy, especially if you're using this in exam mode and you're up to question nine, there's gonna be nine different problems there. So as you finish them, you can navigate to this arrow and collapse these problems down. Right, and say you wanna go back and you're checking answers, we'll go back to problem one, we'll click that arrow, we'll open it up. For some reason it's not working, there we go. And enter into that problem and now I can go back and just double check my answers. So setting them up in problems and setting them up in pages is super effective and I have to save this document now. This is not super necessary in tests, um, but in your just practice, if you wanna go back to problems, you can go control and then this button to get the save menu. And it's going to, I'm already in a folder that I created, but this is the default, my documents. 
you can just save it straight in here with whatever you want, or you can create your own folder. I've got a folder called My Problems. So you can create a new folder by clicking this button here. I'm gonna navigate into my folder, my folder, my problems folder. And you can see I've got two test problems already. I'm gonna call this one test number three. I think you can guess how many times I've had a crack at making this video and click save. And it's saving and now it's saved. You can see it's file name up the top here. Let's say I wanna go back to that previous problem in the other, um, in the other video that I made. I'm gonna click document. This is the document navigation, just like you would click File Explorer in Windows or Finder in Mac. We can go File now. I better click one to speed this up. Whoops. I think I made a new document by accident. Process is gonna be the same though if I don't mess it up. One for File. And then I wanna open a document. So Open. Now I can navigate down to My Problems. Click the little blue uh, arrow and it's gonna open up all of the different problems at my disposable. Problem three is the one we just made. I'm gonna go to test number two and hit enter. And it, uh, I don't wanna save the one I just accidentally had created. So here I am. I have some problems in here. I can go to problem two in the graph where I think I did a different exponential. Yep, three e to the two x. I wanna go back to my other document now. Document, file, open. Let's open test number three, which is the one we just worked on this entire video. And this should be familiar to us. F1 of root three plus one is 3.46. So hopefully that helps you get a bit more confidence with getting around your calculator, setting up problems, setting up pages. I'm gonna go much more in detail into the different pages, like using the graph functionality, defining functions, and all that sort of stuff in other videos. For this one, I just wanted an overview of using your calculator because I know it is intimidating. There is a lot on this calculator. I only got through a tiny bit today, but video by video, you and I are gonna get much better at using this calculator, improve our confidence, and improve our success rate, both in practice and also in exams, in assignments, anytime we really need to use it. So if you've got any questions, please leave them down below. But other than that, have a great day.